Right lads, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Nottingham Forest have just overcome Arsenal by a goal to nil at the City ground, which leaves three main repercussions following this very result on this, the last Saturday of this current Premier League season. First of all, Nottingham Forest, they are safe from the dreaded relegation scrap on the last day of the season, which Everton, Leeds and Leicester are going to have to obviously go through and endure. Second of all, Manchester City are champions of the Premier League for the third season running. They become the second team in Premier League history behind Ferguson's Manchester United, who did it on two occasions. 2 3 peat the Premier League title, winning three Premier League titles in three consecutive years. So, congratulations to them and Pep Guardiola and everyone involved at Manchester City Football Club. And most importantly, which goes hand in hand with City winning the league, is Arsenal's bottle job in this title race this season has been officially completed, signed, sealed, and delivered. And Arsenal will not be lifting the Premier League trophy against Wolves next weekend. And Man City will be lifting the Premier League title against my club Chelsea tomorrow after a more than likely a 9 0 victory for Pep Guardiola's men over Frank Lampard. Men. But yeah, we're going to be getting into those three main repercussions regarding Nottingham Forest and the title race between Man City and Arsenal, which has of course concluded with the blue side of Manchester reaching Premier League glory for the third season in a row. Four Premier League titles now, or five Premier League titles in the last six years, which is just absolutely obscene. Their ninth title in English football, their seventh Premier League title, and yet yeah, Pep Guardiola, I mean, what more can you say about him to be honest? I'll go into Man City a little bit later on in this video because first of all, I just want to praise Nottingham Forest because obviously we with the whole City winning the title thing and Arsenal bottling the league, I don't think Forrest are going to get a lot of plaudits that they do deserve, especially for their performances in recent weeks with those wins over Brighton, Southampton and now Arsenal, which have, of course, kept them up with 37 points going into the last game of the season. And yet, once again, a really solid performance from Nottingham Forest. A result that I said for absolutely weeks now, and if you don't believe me, go back to any video I've done on Arsenal or Nottingham Forest, maybe, on this channel in recent weeks. I said Nottingham Forest would win this game and of course they did so defending really well timing their attacks absolutely brilliantly and being very direct as they usually do as shown by the goal of course that won them the game from Tayo Awani where he finishes off a direct move forward carrying the ball forward from his own half from Morgan Gibbs White who picks out an inch perfect pass for Awani to obviously finish with a little bit of luck off Gabriel but yeah Morgan Gibbs White and Tayo Awani who have been two players who've been absolutely massively influential in this forest escape job in recent weeks and a motorbike has just driven past my house just like Nottingham Forest drove towards survival. You like that one? A bit of improvisation for you. But, um, yep, Forest, I thought, showed a lot of energy, a lot of character, showed a lot of bottle for the fight in this relegation battle in recent weeks. And that's one of the main reasons why I think they deserve a lot of credit because they looked down and out a few weeks ago and they've managed to get themselves safe with, obviously, a game in hand, which is massively positive for the stress levels of Nottingham Forest fans. They don't have to go to Selhurst Park now next week and be absolutely, extremely fucking anxious about results going their way. So, yep, fair play, Nottingham Forest. I think Steve Cooper now, in the last few weeks has found his best you know seven or eight players which is really important especially to be a Premier League club in general not just at the bottom of the table which I think that most managers need to do to get a successful team ticking which I think he's definitely done now Steve Cooper and positive signs to build on next season for Nottingham Forest with a bit of momentum for next season to build on that and maybe even finish in and around mid table if possible but Nottingham Forest fans they'll be celebrating into the night of course and fair play to them I'm glad to see them stay up because obviously they're a massive club and yep yeah, here's to Nottingham Forest maybe hopefully staying up for the long term now and deserve to be staying up and I think their board will be absolutely over the moon that they've stayed up especially given the amount of signings and the amount of money they've spent obviously in the process of doing it as well so Nottingham Forest fans fair play I'm sure you're all absolutely buzzing and right now we'll move on to Arsenal because of course we want to leave the best to last in Man City who have of course been successful been the victors in this Premier League title race with three games to go and yep Arsenal overall like I said I think Jamie Carragher I think it was Gary Neville made a really good point on Monday Night Football last weekend where it was I think Arsenal, they just their players let the emotion get to them too much. I think, and look, I'm not one to be, you know, cussing players or giving out to players or, you know, anyone in football in general for over celebrating a result or whatever. Because at the end of the day, celebrations are celebrations, and you should be celebrating every bit of success that you achieve as a football fan supporting your club in football. But I think in terms of a title race, I think it can massively hinder you, even subconsciously and mentally, in terms of the fact that you see Arsenal when they won games earlier on in the season, especially in those early games post World Cup, where they were celebrating like they just won the league to be honest and like I said I'm not one to be like oh the state of them celebrating they haven't won anything I'm really not like that but I think Gary Neville had a point in terms of the fact that in a title race especially against this City team who are stone cold you need to be stone cold and really just take it as the next game and just really focus on the next game and yeah I think Arsenal have been drawn too much into the emotional side of it and I think it obviously got to them in the later rounds of the season because buying into that you know emotional side of it and celebrating those games it does make you that little bit more anxious in the latter stages 
of the season in terms of, you know, going into those last games and thinking, oh my God, if we lose this game, we could blow everything we fought for this season and everything we've celebrated so far this season. So, and to be fair to Arsenal as well, I think another issue has been squad depth. I think we've seen Arsenal struggle, missing the likes of William Saliba in recent weeks, Alexander Zinchenko, Gabriel Martinelli, who was injured today, which did see Arsenal kind of tinker with the lineup a little bit. We saw the 3 2 4 1 where Thomas Partey was playing as a right back on paper, but obviously shifting into midfield and almost that Trent Alexander Arnold role that he's been playing for Liverpool recently. And obviously, we saw Jakob Kivior on paper playing as left back, but obviously shifting across to make a back three with Gabriel and Ben White. And yeah, like I've said in this channel before, if you're going to be, you know, losing the league title or crumbling in the title race with the loss of one or two key players, you're not going to be able to win the league, realistically speaking, especially against the City team whose depth is just absolutely off the fucking scale. Where if they're missing De Bruyne for a game, they've got Gundogan. If they're missing Grealish for a period, they've got Foden. If they're missing Haaland, they've got Alvarez. If they're missing Diaz, they've got Laporte. You know what I mean? It's just the gap in terms of the depth is absolutely ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, City under Pep Guardiola are miles further in their project than Mikel Arteta is at Arsenal. So obviously it's something that Arteta will look to probably build on in the next few years is catching up to City's quality in terms of the depth of players. And they gave it a good go, Arsenal. And just first of all, I know I've had my laugh with Arsenal fans over the course of the season, mainly because they've had a laugh with me as a Chelsea fan. And obviously for the entirety of the season, all we've heard is fucking, oh, we're going to win the league though. And oh, we're finally going to win the league. And how is it going to be? How's it going to feel when Arsenal win the league and all that stuff? So obviously when they don't win the league, which I've said for absolutely months now, it's going to be funny and it's going to be an excuse for me to go back at G and, you know, be like laughing at G for bottling it. So that's simply the reason why. But like I said, I'm just going to try and be as unbiased as possible in saying this. And Arsenal, they've had a really good season. They have achieved a lot this season. I know people will say, oh, the best season they've ever had and they've not won anything. But I think in terms of the expectations of Arsenal at the start of the season from the general public, which do have to be taken into account when you're judging the success of a club season, most people, including myself, didn't have Arsenal even finishing in the top four this season. So I think to finish in the top four absolutely comfortably and finish second in the table absolutely comfortably and take Man City to the very wire in the Premier League title race this season, especially against all the odds where they were not expected to go anywhere close to that. I think you just have to tip your hat to Arsenal, to be honest. And I'm going to you know, lift them a little bit while they're down because they could fight for it again next season, even though I think it's going to be 10 times harder with the re-emergence of Liverpool, maybe. Man United are going to get stronger. Chelsea, who could maybe click next season under Mauricio Pochettino. But I do think it's been a highly successful season for Arsenal, Premier League title or not. And obviously they'll be disappointed because they have bottled the league, if we're being honest. They really, really have, especially given the fact that they were top of the league for what 240 something days or something that could easily be wrong but it's close enough to that anyway and from that position if you don't win the league it's going to be seen as a bottle job it's as simple as that regardless of what the expectations were at the start of the season or not and finally now moving on to Manchester City who obviously deserve to be last in this video and yeah I mean they've done the three-peat in the Premier League now they've won three Premier League titles in a row they could be on course for the treble winning the Champions League in the final against Inter Milan and the FA Cup against Manchester United and I think at this stage they've got one they just need to win two more games of football to win the treble and be one of the, if not the best Premier League team of all time. I think they would be the best Premier League team of all time, to be honest, especially given the fact they can finish this season with 94 points now, win the Champions League and win the FA Cup as well. I mean, United obviously did it twice in terms of three-peating and they won the treble once, but I think this would just top it all, honestly, especially with the way they've done it. I mean, the football they play in that 3-2-4-1, Pep Guardiola, I mean, I've said in this channel during the week when they beat Real Madrid 4-0, and I'll say it again because, you know, I can say it level-headed now because I wasn't, you know, I was off the rush of City just, you know, producing an absolute performance for the ages against Real Madrid, so maybe people thought, and even myself thought at the time, that I was going to be overboard. But this City team, they're the best team I've ever seen. Pep Guardiola, he is most certainly in the conversation for the best manager of all time now. With the way he he's done things with this City team and I know people once again like I said during the week will go on like oh but he spent a fuckload of money and everything like that but I think it was Richard Dunn actually said it during the week and it's so true there's a lot of Premier League clubs you think of Chelsea Newcastle now Arsenal maybe even Liverpool to an extent Man United obviously all those teams can afford all the players that City have bought in recent years I just think City have been such a well-run club that because they've spent so much money and they've spent it incredibly well that, that's the main stick to hit them with in terms of how successful they've been and I think it's slightly unfair and I think that they de deserve a lot of credit for what they've achieved but I just do think that with what we know from a footballing perspective and what Pep Guardiola has to deal with with a football perspective with coaching this team on the pitch I think he deserves endless amounts of credit to be honest and yep yeah, the thing with Pep Guardiola is as well one of the main reasons why I think he is the best manager or one of the best managers of all time is every single season he seems to have this little bit of a tweak in his city system to make them unpredictable and make them unplayable season 
season on season where you see this season where he's had the shift of John Stones moving into midfield who's obviously a very very technical player and you know comfortable of slotting into that area you have Nathan Ake playing as a left-sided centre-back who's been absolutely brilliant Ruben Diaz who's coming to the team later on in the season in the second half of the season Manuel Akanji who was signed for absolute peanuts and all of a sudden looks like an absolute world beater where he was barely a starter for Dortmund I think he was a starter but you know what I mean he wasn't exactly a flashy player in the world of football you've got Erling Haaland who's a striker that like Pep Guardiola has not really ever managed before to be honest in terms of his physical structure his acceleration in terms of the fact that he's not the most technically excelled footballer ever but Pep Guardiola seems to just have found a system for him that works alongside those double eights of Gundogan and De Bruyne or if Bernardo Silva obviously plays there instead of Gundogan some weeks but he just seems to tweak his system that little bit every single season which you know keeps teams guessing and just just finds a new way of being able to make the City team absolutely unstoppable and unbreakable over the course of a 60 something game season on all competitions which I just think is absolutely ridiculous in this day and age to be honest and if we're being completely honest right I mean it's probably too early to look ahead obviously because the transfer window hasn't even opened yet but who can you see stopping Man City winning this title again next season, to be honest? I mean, I can't really see anyone. I mean, Arsenal, I think they could maybe strengthen, but the thing is, City are going to strengthen as well. I think Chelsea will be closer, but I don't think we'll be able to compete over a 38-game season, even without European football. I think Liverpool might be able to get there if they can keep taking in this new 3-2-4-1 that they found. I think maybe United, if Eric Ten Hag can have an absolutely wonderful transfer window, but I just think City will be, again, way too strong for everyone next season, to be honest, and I think they'll make it four in a row, and six titles out of the last seven seasons which would just be absolutely ridiculous you're reaching PSG and Bayern Munich levels there in terms of being a one-team league really and yet like I said already they're just absolutely ridiculous they're extremely good to watch and they've done it in the best way possible playing the best football you can possibly play in a title winning season where they're absolutely dominating possession from start to finish and scoring a shitload of goals from it so Pep Guardiola and the Manchester City team and everyone involved with the football club I tip my hat to you and congratulations on yet another win as boring as it is from a neutral's perspective but I'm not complaining because of course as a Chelsea fan it did stop Arsenal from winning the Premier League title especially after all the fucking bigging they gave all season long so I will not complain from that perspective but yep in summary Man City win the title fair play to them Arsenal like I said even though I've had a laugh with them over the course of the season on this channel still a very good season for them and should be proud of what they've achieved this season and Nottingham Forest congratulations to them on securing another season in the Premier League under Steve Cooper and absolute limbs at the City ground following that 1-0 victory, well-earned victory over Mikel Arteta's Arsenal tonight at the City Ground. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, it would be absolutely massively appreciated as per usual and also if you could subscribe to the channel as well that would also be hugely, hugely appreciated because we are looking to hit the 3,000 subscriber mark as soon as we can possibly get there and turn on the notification bell as well because you will never miss one of these absolutely scintillating videos. Said no one ever but um, yeah I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll chat to you later.